Hello, good morning. Uh, or good afternoon, I should be saying. Uh, it's now Sunday. I uh, planned to go yesterday, but uh, get carried away with all our bits and pieces around the house. So today, uh, it's a wee bit on the blustery side, as one of the poo would say, but we're going to head off, as you can probably see by the signpost behind me, up by uh, the Avondyke Centre, the Scout Centre, onto the Roman Road. A few folks have asked to uh, go and see the Roman Road, so that's where I'm going to head off today. Uh, and hopefully the weather will keep uh, well for us. It's, uh, the, w the weather might interfere with the, the zoom a wee bit, uh, or the flip I should say. Uh, but anyway, let's see where we, we can get after. So, we'll cross the road, it's always a good start. And we'll see what we can find. Some of you might uh, many of you have probably been to the Roman Road before, just to give you a wee bit of an idea of where you are. That's just heading up to uh, Unston Mill. You're taking this journey up the road here. The road, which is the back road to Sanford, we were there a couple of weeks ago up at the, the Crummock. But this uh, this walk we're going to take you by. So I see up by the Brankston Way. In fact, just it's a bit further ado, there's a there's a wee flue here just as I'm walking by. It's a bit called Black Medic. And that's uh, using all sorts of medicines, but uh, it was also using witchcraft as well. Here yeah, I'm no longer getting into the, the flora. Anyway, aye, so we'll, we'll see uh, what kind of day it is today. See a wee bit blustery for us, but hopefully once we get out the, the wind, when we get up to kind of the bog side area and into the kind of woods the, where the Roman wood is located, a wee bit better. Sun shining, though. It's not too bad. probably at least twice a year. One for the good weather, if we can find a good day to do a guided walk, uh, see the sights that are on the way. And secondly, to do a mushroom walk, which uh, is better done between September and October. You will get mushrooms all year. Uh, but the best time to go for the variety would be around about that kind of September, early October time. Uh, unfortunately, well, <laughs> I would like to think that we're not still in, I was going to say hibernation, no hibernation, isolation. Uh, although some people might well be in hibernation. I know that my son hardly gets out of his bed these days, but anyway. Uh, so, uh, hopefully we'll not be still doing that at that time. But if we are, I'll take you up and see the mushrooms at that time. over the road here, as I should be, walking into the traffic. So, so there we are, that's the start of the walk, what I'll do it. So I'll catch you up at the other side, uh, just up by Brangston, and I'll tell you a wee bit about Brangston up there. Hi, hello again. Up okay with the, the wind just coming to the, there's a turn here to the left. We're not taking that, however. Uh, we're going to carry on up the hill just following the road for now. Just going to get in just a wee scanner. Because the windmills right down the road, that's the distance. And uh, you'll get a Highland rig uh, over by. Now, just up there to the left, just in front of you. Lovely wee walk that. Uh, I'm not going to do that today, but that is a public right away. There's a public right away goes up there, and at the top of the road there, you take a right and you keep to the right and round the hussies, uh, and there's a, a gate you get through, and then there's a wee loop that takes you over towards Bogside, which rejoins with another right away, which we'll catch later on. Uh, if you are taking that walk in there, I uh, it's not very often done, I've only done it maybe three or four times myself. Uh, but uh, get a hold of the, the booklet, it shows you exactly the route of it. Uh, and uh, that's how you around around Brankston Huss. Brankston Huss uh, goes back to at least, I think it was the early 18th century. 
In fact, at one time the house was actually called Dyke Head, which is also the name of the farm up here as well. I'm not sure why it changed its name, but anyway, uh, Brangston, uh, the, the name itself, if you don't know, uh, the word Branks comes from a, a contraption which was a, a kind of iron frame which used to go over the head of criminals and uh, they were prayed had a great big spike that went into the, the mouth to stop you from talking you would be dragged in chains through the town and get apples, apples, rotten tomatoes and eggs and all the rest of it thrown at you uh, apparently the, one of the last recordings of it getting used was around, I think it was about 1526 uh, in Edinburgh town uh, when it was uh, commonly <laughs> known to be given to women who nagged their husbands Alas, some of these traditions uh, have not endured uh, and uh, that stopped some years ago So that's what this, uh, the Branks is from Why it's got the association with here, I'm not sure uh, It was also a house which uh, was uh, residing in by Mr, uh, I think it was Robert Gourley, I'm not 100% sure on his first name but Mr Gourley, I think his wife was Lilius and uh, he was uh, one of the early Bank of Scotland managers in Glasgow and he resided in there Find another wee story I can always remember uh, how Hugh Burns tell me he says a good friend of his, uh, John Murray <laughs> Uh, and him decided one day that he wanted to build a, a wee windmill uh, to supply power to the... There's a wee cottage up there, uh, just I think it's called Branston Cottage, uh, where John Murray stayed. And he thought he'd power that wee place with the, the windmill. And this is the early days, long before, you know, you've got the, the windmills of today, which are distant. And... Uh, here, they asked Master Gourley if they could uh, take uh, one of the trees away uh, to make for the, the main shaft of the, the windmill. And he says, aye, aye, no bother, no bother, but just don't take the ones next to the hen house. But apparently the one next to the hen house was, what, was the best one. Uh, so they cut it down in here. As they cut it down, there was no collapse and it fell onto the hen house and killed half the hens. <laughs> so, not to worry. How are you Alright. <coughs> just as we're uh, crossing here, uh, can't see it now. But uh, this is where the site of uh, the Scout Centre was. I'm just going up to the gate, I'm not going any further. But there used to be a Scout Centre in there, Avon Dyke. Uh, I don't know how long, I don't know when it was first put in, I'm guessing probably uh, just pre war. Uh, I might be wrong, I don't know. But uh, it was. Uh, very popular and the scouts for all over Scotland and further abroad uh, came here uh, and stayed here. Many folks across Scotland probably remember fondly their, their days here at the centre. There's, I believe it's still used for camping but the, the main building's away now, which is a shame. I used to go up there, we used to have uh, Sunday school days up there. A really nice bit. Aye, another... <laughs> Back to that wee story about uh, John Murray there and Hugh building the, the windmill. Eventually they did actually get the, the shaft of the windmill up and they got it working, believe it or not, but uh, to get up to the windmill, uh, Hugh was telling me that what they did is they went round the, the road here. Uh, I can tell it now, alas, Hugh uh, passed away some years ago, but he told me this. <laughs> they, they took the bottom rung and uh, some of these posts off that uh, so that he could get up the windmill. So the boys here and the electricity board are probably cursing them now. Anyway, that uh, the noise you can hear apart from the birds is uh, the dogs barking at Dyke Head Farm. Again, another old farm. We'll have a wee look just as we're passing by. It was a Moody's that was in there, lovely family. I remember my old Mr. Moody, lovely guy, and his wife. And uh, aye, it's still farm today. And there it is, there's uh, Dykehead there. Uh, if you come up here, sometimes you can see, they've usually got llamas here, but I don't see them the other day. Uh, interesting to know how far back that farm goes to. 
There's also on the other side of the, the farm there. Just over the left hand side. I'll see it'll be better, a bit better f further on here. Uh, there are four uh, what were aircraft hangars. I believe they come from sir. I'm not sure if it was Presswick. I'm presuming it was kind of Presswick. And I was told that they, they were from the Second World War. Well, that's true or not, again, I don't know. But that's the aircraft hangers. I'm sure they're using them for the business now. So, so, the first part of the walk, dead easy. Straight road all the way up here. And uh, what I'll do is I'm going to, it takes, when you do get to the top there, it takes a wee juke to the left and a wee juke to the, the right. I'm going to join you at the top again, uh, just as we're going to adjoin the, the Roman road. And uh, I'll tell you about it when we get there. Right, bye for it. Hi, right, here we are at the top of the, the Bray, just looking over the, the, the gorse there and the windmills over to Dovesdale. Uh, and this is where we're going today. See that big windmill there? It just starts at the, at the end at the end of the trees there. That's uh, where the Roman road is. And uh, you can see more gorse in the distance here. So we're heading off there. Uh, so you need to take this wee juke here. Uh, just run. Oh, there. what's this? Yeah, it's, uh, looks looks like uh, it might be wrong. Is that a marsh marigold? I might be wrong. Uh, marsh marigold, I think that is. That's a lovely thing. Uh, hi. I always get distracted. So the Roman road. Uh, where did I start? Aye, uh, at the beginning. Uh, if I remember right, I'm kind of making this up as I go along, so I'm sure, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, the Romans uh, arrived in Scotland about 80 AD, made their way up north, as you know, as, as far as I'm aware, the Scots were never conquered. Uh, they made their various walls, uh, first uh, you had obviously you had, uh, Hadrian's Wall, which was built in over several periods and you also get the Antonine Wall as well but connecting uh, these sites and connecting uh, major forts was uh, was the Roman roads and we're just going to enter and join one of the roads here now this is the gate you're looking for you'll see a sign there that says Lockwood Turbine uh, Wind Turbine but you'll see I got this put in just like two years ago uh, they agreed to put that in. There's a fence, uh, sorry, a fence, there's a wee gate here, and that is where you're uh, heading for, just through that gate. And it's been put in for you because it's a public right away. That's what it's here for. Right, and uh, you're just going to follow this path down here. Now you're not quite in the Roman roads yet. Uh, I'll, I'll show you that just a wee bit further on, but if all the, if all the rights away, it's still just. I'd say this has to be up there with me, with, for one of the best. It's, it's lovely, it's, you see that kind of uh, spring, late spring time, with the gorse coming through, oh you can smell the, ah, you can smell the coconut there, especially with the wind. Just eat a wee bit as we go along. Yeah, oh you've got all sorts of stuff here. Anyway, you can explore it for yourself. Uh, I don't want to tell you everything that's here. That's because I don't know everything. <laughs> But uh, what you've got here, you've got the windmills which have, in fact if you came here about 20, 25 years ago there was absolutely none apart from that one that John Murray and Hugh Burns put up. Uh, well, tell why, David Helms down at the uh, town end as well which is which he made his cell. But anyway that's some going off a story. Aye so the Romans, here we are. Uh, so they came to Scotland and they built these uh, roads which connected various forts uh, uh, and uh, the forts that uh, uh, are uh, important in this context here are just by, away in the distance, you'll not see it from here, but uh, Loudon Hill is a way back there, there was a fort there and there was also a fort up at Castle Dykes and the road here connected those two uh, uh, castles. Uh, and uh, it was during the time of uh, Agricola. Now Agricola, we wee bit of useless information again. Uh, Agricola is where the word ag agriculture comes from. Uh, it means farmer. Uh, 
basically. So, so there, that's, this is uh, one of his uh, roads. Now, we believe it was actually made uh, in, in the early days of occupation, but lo and behold, uh, 2007. Now, we've not actually done it today, but there's actually another right away, which I, I'll just move on a wee bit, you can see it better. There was another uh, section of Roman Road which was discovered by a guy called Bill Houston. And believe it or not, Bill Houston is from Texas. Houston from Texas. Anyway, uh, that's Cowblaw Farm. And if you'd walked on a wee bit further, right to the very end, that's, that's you right at the... There's a corner where it turns up towards the Yards Farm. Uh, but at that corner, you take a, a left down that road. It's Cowblaw. Uh, there used to be a tile works there many years ago. But Aye, so at Cout Law there's a section of right away which actually joins a bit where we're going today. And it's, it's lovely as well, that's a cracking wee walk. And that's right on the, the, the parish boundary. So we're still in Stonehouse, it's a big parish area. So here we are, aye. So, in terms of the Roman road, uh, you can still see the camber of the road further on. We're right on the line of it as we speak right now. In fact, I might get a wee photo of that just while I'm here, while there's a blue sky, because that's not always the case. But in uh, 18... sorry, sorry, 1936, uh, it was still said that there were still sections of the, the Roman road that could still... Uh, you could still find a bit of stonework. Uh, but that was uh, that's further behind me, up towards Chapel Farm. It actually crosses just the back of Chabble Farm. We were there a few weeks ago. Wow, fantastic day. A wee bit windy, but good walking weather. Wouldn't have liked to be struck in the end of one of the propellers there. You go waking up into the sky, but anyway. So, aye, the road, uh, Bill Houston, he discovered a new section which takes a, a diagonal uh, crossing from this road uh, towards Castle Hill near the spittle and uh, there's more information about that in one of the things uh, here's to us, one of the books there in Stonehouse there's been nothing actually found on the road that anybody has declared uh, there's a, there is metal detector stuck here all the time but I'm not aware of anything being found here uh, other than the acknowledgement that it is the Roman road. Uh, if I just get a wee view up the top there. Uh, no coins, no nothing. Uh, however, there is only so many miles of proven Roman road in Scotland. I believe it's about 50 miles and this is part of that section. Now, the other thing is you'll get down here as well. I'm not going to tell you when to come and get it because I come up here myself. <laughs> Uh, but this place abounds with raspberries as well. So if you like your raspberries for making your gin, this is a good bit to come. There's no much in the way of brambles at this, but there is in the bog side right away later on. What's interesting is this. I've been kind of walking this section here for probably about 30 years. The field to my right, and especially the field uh, when you get the bottom of the hedge there leading up to the yellow gorse and the, at the background there, that was just all, uh, that was wild. It, was, it hadn't been cultivated certainly for a long, long time. Uh, and that's been brought back into use again, which is good to see. Other things you, you can see here, and I've just saw them quite a few times a deer. You see a deer quite regular up here, and they're, they're not expecting humans, so they, they don't quite scare as easily as some of the, the ones that's nearer the town. So, so there you go, that's a Roman road. If you've not been there before, well, you've seen it now, so you can come and kind of explore it yourself. So we're going to carry on. Uh, you just follow this track uh, all the way up to the line where the gorse is and then it carries on uh, all the way up to a stile but I'll show you that later on and uh, then we're going to take a, a wee donor on a, a drove road 
this field on your left hand side which you'll see is kind of a lighter colour that's been cut back uh, leads up to uh, Bog, Bog Side Farm there uh, or in fact that was, uh, <laughs> it was actually Stonehouse's International and that would be no international airport but there used to be a wee airstrip up here until maybe, I don't know, 25 years ago for the micro lights maybe uh, there was light, light aircraft occasionally uh, so uh, it's not quite in the same size as uh, Stravens airport but uh, that's where they went up if they were going out for a day when it was in the Sunday and uh, there used to be a wee shed just along the other side of the there where the, the airport was. <laughs> so, right, so I'm going to catch you up at the top of the hill now as the sun's getting down and uh, we'll show you what we can find up there. Well, that's me at the top of the, the brae now. Just about to go up to the, the stile at the right away at the top there. Uh, if I'd put this on about a minute ago, you would have seen a massive <laughs> buzzer fly right in front of my face. I'm glad that one didn't kick on me as it did last week, but uh, anyway. So, once you get onto the path here, it's, it's great at this time of year, the, the vegetation's uh, kept down. In fact, it's worth noting, some of the farmers are actually paid to maintain some of these rights away as well, uh, by the government. I, and, and encouraged to walk them and use them. As I said before, it keeps the vegetation done for them as well when they're accessing it. I'm not saying that the more the better, but certainly uh, it's something that locally I think we should keep to our, our, uh, ourselves in terms of using it, learning for it, getting, bringing the children out and see the countryside around them. Now, if you are coming up here in September, October, that's fantastic, uh, uh, you will see plenty of mushrooms. In fact, it's probably the best site I'm aware of in Lanarkshire. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'll tell you more about it on another day. You can also see just what is, just see that ridge there. It's, there's ridges which carry right the way down the hill. There's a wee section here between this fence and that's one where they get the remains of the, the run rig system. Uh, but aye, uh, you come up here in uh, September, this is just covered in uh, mushrooms. I'm no expert in mushrooms. I've, I've learned a bit about the local mushrooms here for 25, 30 years or so, uh, and I've recorded many of them. And uh, I think I must have recorded around 150, 200 kinds of mushrooms, but there's about 10,000 uh, in the UK. Uh, and what you need to watch is some of them could kill you or put you in kidney dialysis for the rest of your days. Uh, I'm not going to tell you too much about it because you can come and join one of the walks one day, but uh, aye, there's plenty here. And there is stuff that you can eat as well, but uh, you're not going to see any of that today. Uh, you will get mushrooms that are grown at different times of year uh, and the best stuff as I say is later on I just love this bit of year though just I love the yellow just up here and you'll come to the top this is the bit you're looking for next there's a wee style here it's been put in to assist you over a fence uh, so this is where we're going next in fact there's been a bit of work done up here there's been got some trees cut back but anyway right what further I do I'll try and get out here and you're still on the Roman road. Uh, the line of it, you've got options here now though. It's quite interesting. You're at a junction. And uh, the Roman road actually carries on over the top of this. We're going to take a wee detour. But uh, that down here is uh, the bog side right away. Now we can actually come up that way. And uh, we'll probably get go back down that way uh, later on for coming out. Uh, but that is another route in. There are several routes in the, the Roman Road. Uh, but we're going to take this route. We're going to take a right when we come over the stile, and we're going to come over what is Bogside 
uh, right away. And this is an ancient, very ancient uh, drove road, probably going back to the medieval. I'm not sure what's been happening up here, this is just recent, but there has been. There's tracks up here, I mean the farmers quite right to use it, but uh, I don't think I've actually seen tracks in here for a long time. Now, this bit is absolutely fantastic for the mushrooms. Uh, and what you're looking for, this is a damp area, which quite often uh, you need your wellies for, your, your walking boots, or you will get wet. But the mushrooms love this kind of moist ground here, and uh, you'll find them on the bankings, left and right, and up through the centre. And it just abounds with different kinds of mushrooms. Uh, and uh, I get up here in September. Or look, hopefully we'll be back at the isolation. You can come and join the walk for that. But this is just a wee bit of magic here. It's almost like a fairy kingdom. In fact, if fairies popped out the now, I wouldn't be surprised. And it's all gladed, and the sun's just kind of beaming through there. Superb. I should shut up and let you see a bit in silence for a bit. You find all sorts of uh, mosses up here as well. Even the mosses have got different properties. How little we know. Days gone by, there you go, said it. Uh, the, the folks who lived in the land, uh, they knew what everything could be used for. Uh, and it's like the pine tree, the pine tree, every single bit of that tree can be used. It's got different properties, different uh, uh, uses. Even the sap was used as a sealant. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you before, you can even have tried to make the tea from it, that's another one. Yeah, pine needle tea. Right, you just get the needles, uh, preferably young ones, and uh, boil them for five minutes and uh, strain it through and you'll get a tea. Maybe add a wee bit of lemon to it. I'm trying to get the pine needles is the other thing right enough. Yeah, magic. And if you like your bird watching, get yourself up here. Oh, there's a wee a great tip through that. There's all sorts of finches. Yeah, you get a buzzard's nesting as well. So I'm going to just take you up to the end of this. Now I'm walking through this gladiated area. Uh, normally this is actually very boggy but there's not been a lot of rain so if, if you want just go through the fence here but keep to the fence, follow the fence up because uh, if you've not been up here before <laughs> you can get lost the first time I ever come up here as a boy uh, I get lost uh, anyway it was an adventure as a when you don't get lost <laughs> yes having an adventure but uh, you'll see uh, at the end here of the, the glider section, you'll see it opening out. When you get to the end there, that's you joining another right away, uh, which is called the Cowplaw right away, uh, where you can take a turn to the right, or as we're going to do today, we're going to take a turn to the left. And I've got a wee drink of juice at the corner here. There used to be a right away sign up here, uh, a wooden one. Uh, I think it's in the undergrowth over the left somewhere. But when I take folks out for a guided walk, this is where we stop for lunch. I'm just going to stop myself in a wee second. I'm just going to take you to the end just so you can see where we are and get our bairns. But this is ah, it's fantastic. Uh, the sun's just kind of disappeared a wee bit there, I'm not sure how good that is, but that's your right away up to Cowplaw. You have got a couple of fences near the farm uh, you need to get through, 
Uh, and then right behind me there, a fantastic. This is the new section which we discovered by Bill Houston in 2007. There's more information in the book called Here's to Us about that. And if anybody wants to copy his research, uh, he's passed that on there that others might learn from it as well. A big stone there, I don't know what that is. Sometimes I always look to see if there's any markings on them, but where you are now, again, we're going to leave this to another day. But behind those trees down there is, uh, what do you call it, uh, Blackwood Loch. Uh, you might have heard of that, uh, which I think it was about the early 1970s, it was uh, the, the dam was blown there. Uh, and that can be accessed by crossing this field. And it's full of sheep there now, uh, sheep are fine. Uh, but up to the fantastic views there across the valley. Uh, Tinto in the distance as well, but uh, in the field just over a fence you've got cows there, so they avoid the cows, because uh, it's uh, not so good. So, uh, I'm just going to go over this wee bit here, oh nice wee purple viola in that. I think it's called, was it dog violet, I think that one's called. Uh, so I, that, that's where we're going to be falling. Uh, we're going to come in, I'll just show you this wee bit, because this is one of my Everybody's got magic places. This is one of my magic places. Just here. And we usually just sit down on the bank here and uh, we have our lunch. If you are going to sit down, bring a poly bag we get to sit on. Make sure you take the poly bag back with you. Uh, but sit on there. It will be moist though because that is moss along there. And have your lunch there. So I'm just going to have a wee quick drink of water and uh, we'll catch up. Uh, with you in a minute or two when we're going to walk along this new section. Okay, bye for now. Okay, right, had a wee drink and uh, we'll just get head back along the road now. I quite like to follow, there's a wee path here, just a wee ridge here, as much as I can. Oh, there's the sun coming back out for us as well, good timing. Uh, it just keeps you a bit drier. Just down to the right hand side, of, you've got the new section of the road to tell you about. And in the left here, you've got some lovely woods. Uh, which you can explore to your heart's content, but don't go too far for the path if you don't know where you're going. Uh, but this is lovely. This is my one of my favourite wee sections in the village. In fact, there you go. Uh, a bracket fungus there, just sticking at the side of the tree. You'll find the bracket fungus, there's lots of different kinds, I'll not get into detail. Uh, I'll leave that for another time. In fact, I got a bit over there, I'm just going to go and check it after. I've got to go off road. <laughs> you have ever saw American werewolf in London? <laughs> Say, keep to the path. Well, a lot to be said for that. Uh, I don't think there's any werewolves up here. Uh, ah, you'll find all these bracket funguses on the, the trees. There's another. But there. Uh, lots of different kinds. Uh, again, they've all got their own properties as well. Some folk in medieval times used to make paper from it. Uh, I'm sure you can still do that today, but uh, then again, maybe the skills in doing so have never been lost. So I'm just rejoining the road here. Again, spring, uh, spring time. Uh, September time, absolutely covered in different kinds of. Uh, fungi, mushrooms. Uh, somebody asked me what's the difference between toadstools and mushrooms. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> but there was a time where people used to say that toadstools were the bad genes and mushrooms were the good ones, but technically they're, they're just the same. You'll find things like uh, fly agaric up here, if you, if you know the fairy folks. That's the one, I'm going to set a wee photo here, uh, which is bright red and it's got white bits protruding from it. Uh, that's just a lovely wee shot there. Uh, aye, and don't eat that one. <laughs> In fact, don't even be collecting any that you, uh, if you've never uh, collected before, go along and join one of the, the rangers walks at Shatlerow or up at uh, Calder Glen. Uh, I do collect a few things here and there is a couple that we collect when we're at a walk but we make sure we check everybody's baskets because uh, there are things here which can harm you. 
significantly, including fly agaric. Uh, you can also get the magic mushrooms, I'm not even going to show you them because the winds will be chewing in them. Uh, but uh, aye, so at least I've got about 200 kinds I've found up here. And, but it's just, it's for me, it's just the walk itself, it's just, it's just grand. And there's a the cruise out. Yeah, just looking at the Blackwood Lock area. Uh, a grand old time. Not exactly partying, but uh, just taking it easy as we all are. All kinds of birds out here as well, so uh, just take the time to listen. Uh, what's soon about you? This tree's just fallen actually recently. Is it hadn't they fallen last time I was up here? And if you are coming out here, make sure you bring your phone, you will get a reception here. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to leave this bit of, uh, and I'll catch you at the end, but uh, if you just walk to the, the very end of this, uh, you'll, you'll come to your fence uh, and uh, I'll tell you where you're going for there when we get there. Oh, there's a, I thought that was a big skull or something, it's a bloody plastic bottle. Uh, you're not going to come across bears or anything like that here, so you're, you're perfectly safe. I'll just take another wee look onto that section of the, the road for you again here. So there you are, new section of Roman Road. Uh, I'll tell you a wee bit, in fact, well, I'll just carry on with you now. In fact, that new section uh, goes by uh, Spittle. Heads over the, the candor, and what uh, Bill reckons is this new section was uh, when the Romans come back again, having uh, retreated uh, as they have uh, d they do it several times, uh, and uh, they were just basically looking for a, an easier way to cross the candor. Uh, and there's a so there's a diversion which takes you over, probably an easier bit to ford uh, in the river, which then takes you up. It's a place called Cairn Cockle, which is interesting because Cairn Cockle, which is a, an old uh, cairn which lies on the border between Stonehouse and uh, the Dulce Surf uh, area uh, on the Carlisle Road, it's recorded as a prehistoric burial mound, uh, which was partially damaged by the, the, the works to the, the motorway in the early 70s. Uh, they didn't know it was there, uh, or did they? Who knows? Uh, anyway, uh, However, Bill's suggesting that that actually might be a Roman watchtower that's there and not a burial cairn, which is interesting. Uh, and he explained it in such a way as that what the Romans did is, uh, as you've probably heard, the, the Roman roads are, are very, very straight. But uh, where they changed direction was usually where they hit a river in a low section or where they hit a high section and then they changed direction for there and they put towers there and it's just so that you get a good vantage point of the landscape all around there so he's suggesting that maybe uh, possibly that that's actually their own watch there who knows we'll find it another day now you will see we're going through here oh there's a wee just up in the tree this isn't got a great zoom there's a just on the branch there oh it's a wee Aye, we chaff and share, we cracker. Aye, so when you're coming through this section here, there is a wee juke here, it just, there's a wee slight bend which takes you to the left. Just follow the, 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 the path. You can't go wrong. <laughs> well, you could, but uh, we should be alright. In fact, there's a woodpecker just flew by us uh, to my left. You get the greater spotted woodpecker here. Aye. They're in abundance now, which is great. Never used to see any of them when I was away. Then again, you never used to see what magpies when I was young and now they're abundant. Uh, so here we are at the end. I said I've got to catch up with you here, but I've just uh, travelled the distance. It's not too far to where I stopped for a wee drink of water. Uh, aye, so... Here we are at another junction. Uh, it's very soft underfoot if you don't stick to that pathway. You get more choices here. Uh, we've now rejoined the confirmed uh, known right away, which actually follows this side of the fence. In fact, right down here, 
and just go on it so I can show you it. I'm actually on the Roman road here and I don't know if you can see it but just to the left hand side there's a ditch down this side and there's a ditch down here falling the fence. You're, this is the Roman road here and it carries through if you can, if you want. Uh, we're not going to do that today but if you carry on through there uh, it's kind of hard going but it's quite adventurous, I quite like it but it'll take you to Tan Hill Farm and you'll follow a line of trees next to the fence uh, and that'll take you out onto what is the back road uh, to Blackwood so if you follow that road then up to the left eventually it'll take you onto Union Street so that's, that's another route you can do I'm not going to do that today but where I'm going to show you is a crossing point for where we're going today uh, because if you don't find it, it's no easy to get across in here because what we've got is a barbed wire fence which stretches the length of this walk fortunately, or uh, unfortunately in a way for uh, if I'm going to put it up, there's a tree here uh, which has crashed in on the, 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 the fence here so I just get a good solid footing lift yourself up and over and that's where we're heading now now, I'm going to take a wee detour before I follow this pathway back. I'm just going to cut through here uh, just to show you the view. It's absolutely brilliant. If you are coming up here, it's worth uh, just cutting through to the gorse. You'll see the yellow on your right hand side there. Just follow the, the yellow. I can hear the creaking of the branches here. And you'll see a big windmill there. It's kind of brightening up now as we come out the, the glade lovely, lovely big open bit and it's just to get your well you're not really get your bearings for here uh, but if I was to walk straight on for here that would take me straight back to Stonehouse so a uh, wee slight detour to the proceedings but sometimes it's worth getting off the beaten path to just get a different view of things. Wow look at how yellow that is, that's brilliant. Superb. So, aye, so you're coming another line of trees here. Uh, I'm not going to go any further than this, I'm just going to go to the top here a wee bit just to show you it. And uh, over by through there, uh, you'll get to Castle Hill, which we'll go to another day, uh, and that is, uh, will take you back to Stonehouse. There's all sorts of things out there as well, but I say I'll take you now another day. So what we are doing is we're getting cut back onto the road here. So I'm going to put this off, and uh, I'll catch up with you a wee bit further on. 